Hello and welcome back. My name is Pat. This is the Pat Podcast. It's been a while since I've been back, but boy, have I been gone through some stuff here. In case you haven't heard, I had my second child, and uh, I'm learning very quickly what it's like to have a daughter instead of a son. It's very interesting so far. All the components seem to be the same except for key parts, obviously. But I think what blew my mind the most, and also welcome back to the Pat Podcast. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel, to our channel, the Jackass Express. It really does help us out. We're trying to get to our 1,000 subscribers, as I call it, and the 4,000 hours of watch time, apparently. So the, what you're supposed to do is go and get uh, 4,000 of your friends and watch this for about a minute apiece, and we'll, we'll, we'll be solid. That's how math works, right? I, I, I don't know. Anyway. But yeah, I had my second kid, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, reliving a lot of war stories that I had with my first child. A lot of uh, very interesting moments. I um, forgot that sleep does not come when you're uh, when you have a small child. They do not let you uh, entertain the thought of of recovery because they're they they must eat and sleep first, which makes sense. Their priority, I agree with that fully. But um, I I have didn't think there was that much more to learn in terms of the parenting. And boy, there is a lot to learn with parenting. Like how to say it properly. But I want to say it my way, parenting. Little girl is so much more calm than the boy. The boy, when he was little boy, when he was a uh, little guy, he was crying all the time. I mean, he was fed, he was changed, he was hugged. I mean, there was nothing that kid didn't get. But there was a reason he was crying all the time. And for some reason, she's just very calm. She's actually very quiet and... When she's hungry, she, she'll make up, you know, really loud. But for the most part, she's doing great, and she's having a great old time. Well, in that time, I took a break from uh, making podcasts, so I appreciate those of you that stuck around. I don't blame you if you uh, kind of forgot about this and all the Pat Podcast stuff for a while. It has been a lot going on. Um, it, it gave me time to really think about the direction I wanted to take or we wanted to take Jackass Express as we continue to do this. And uh, there's a lot of, I mean, we're beginning the changes that we've been talking about for so long that I'm really excited about, and we're almost done with them. That's all I can tell you. I don't have a definitive date. It's, it's really hard to create an entertainment medium when you have, you know, 90% of your crew around the world. I'm very lucky that, you know, Johnny works with me, so he's he's here but, you know, Brandon is still in Germany, and uh, Julian is in, uh, you know, the eastern part of the world. Same thing with uh, Chase and uh, Sax. He, he's usually running around in, within the states. He's going from state to state all the time. Same thing with Tip. He goes wherever they tell him to go. And um, he, I, of all of them, Tip's the one who probably is here the most often whenever we need him. But I know it's hard for him to just stop and, and join us. But it's been really, really freaking awesome. We just had Mother's Day yesterday. It was a lot of fun. I, I've learned that I always have things going wrong with me and whenever I'm trying to get to my family. And then whenever it comes to my wife's family, things run smoother. I don't want to say they run smooth because that's inaccurate, but they run smoother. But with me, for instance, um, we had just brought home our newborn. Everything was settling. And then all of a sudden... Uh, our, our 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 son gets sick. He throws up, and we're like, "Oh God, please don't let him have a stomach bug." Because the last thing you want is to have a stomach bug inside of a, a tiny newborn. The newborn doesn't have the same ability to take like medicines and stuff like you know older kids do. You have to be over a certain weight before you can start taking medicine. So anything she gets, it's scary. It's out of, out of your mind, frightening. But luckily, it never passed to her. He had a fever which we thought was infection. We, we would call the nurse's hotline. We talked to nurses and, and even consulted a doctor that we just happened to know as a friend. And thankfully, they were very generous with their information. And uh, we uh, got him squared away. But, oh, man, if anything could have gone wrong that week. Oh, and also he fell. I was with him. I was playing with him. He makes a turn where he does like a 90-degree turn. His feet go out from under him. Boom, hits his head. And so 
I pick him up immediately, and I'm like, are you okay? And he had, he had hit his nose, so his nose was, like, bleeding a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I have to stay calm. I'm panicking inside internally, like, oh, God. But um, he does he makes the mistake of, like, reaching for his nose, and then he goes like this, like, where he covers, for the audio listeners who can't see this, but I'm, like, rounding my face here. And on his forehead and everything, and I tell my wife, who's in the living room with our newborn, like, oh, God, you know what? I do need help with this. Uh, maybe put the baby down and, and bring her into the bedroom while we clean up, you know, our son, get the all that medic, you know, the first aid going. <sighs> she turns the corner and she sees our son with his face full of blood and freaks out. Now, granted, she didn't know what exactly happened, so she just saw her son's face covered with blood, but it was not a fun hour for that. We both kind of panicked and had a bad moment there am i too loud i've always wondered that if people are listening to this and my audio doesn't sound quite right please let me know i'm trying to not blow out your ears but i'm also trying not to sound too quiet i've been accused of both so i want to be um very considerate of that um and i should also mention that after he hit his head the day after is when he got sick and threw up so what were we thinking oh crap what if he has a concussion because he did hit his head a little bit but um Talk to nurses and all that, and he seemed fine. We did all the tests you're supposed to do with him, the little cognitive tests you're supposed to do, and uh, check the dilation of the pupils every hour and all that. It's a scary thing being a parent. It is freaking scary being a parent. I, I mean, I knew this before, but now it's like double because regardless of whether or not one is a newborn, if the other one gets sick, you have to stop everything and go with them. And we're very fortunate that my wife's parents are very open to like, hey, bring him over here, hey, Let's take him here, whatever. But the reality is that if we didn't have their help, we would be in a tough pickle because if he did get sick and he did have an infection, we'd have to remove him and like Lysol everything down to like burn it till it's sanitized at, because we, we can't let the little newborn get sick. We can't. But, uh, you know, she's okay. He's okay. Everybody's fine. I'm going crazy. Wife's going crazy. She's a she's a saint. I don't know how she does it. She's putting up with both of them and with me. But that's, I mean, I guess that's part of the game too. Poor thing. I I like to think she go, she's going to get a good, uh, she got a good Mother's Day deal. You know, get her a new phone and uh, take her out to Famous Dave's. Delicious Famous Dave's. Which I'm, I, she loves Famous Dave's, but secretly I like Famous Dave's. So I was like, we'll just works out for both of us we'll just both do that um what else happened been listening to a lot of uh john graham's live streaming the see me after class podcast and lately it's been really exciting because he's been going through this whole issue with uh, i should go back to the beginning if you don't know who john graham is john graham is a director of of uh cinema in the form of video games. Currently, his favorite medium is the Halo medium. And what I mean by that, he makes something called Machinima. And Machinima is basically, if you've ever played a video game, sometimes you get those little cutscenes where they're, you know, they're acting out a part and then you continue through the game and then you get another one of those. Well, technically that part in there, that little cinematic piece, it looks like a movie, is called Machinima because it's machine-made cinema. So, People take that a step further. There's actually a company named Machinima, which nowadays has nothing to do with the actual term Machinima. Um, and he takes video games and he uses the characters inside game to act out movies or shows or whatever. And currently his most popular one is RB and the Chief. I've watched that show ever since, oof, ever since it came out, honestly. I remember being in the library at UTEP and I was watching Red vs. Blue when that had just come out. And like a couple days later, I was looking for things like that. And sure enough, there was this thing by this guy named John Graham. And there was um, Arby and the Chief, which is a hilarious show. It's a hilarious show. A little bit rough around the edges, but at, at its heart is a good show with a good message. So come to find out a couple days ago, uh, you know, they, they if you really want to know the full story, you should go listen to John Graham's uh, live stream podcast. It's on his channel. It's easy to find on YouTube, but basically they took down a lot of his shows and he has been, he had been fighting with them over like why they did it. 
And uh, to me, it feels like they're pulling him because they have content in there that's controversial with the new PC era stuff. He talks about that too. And I actually noticed that on one of his videos in season two, there's a part where the Master Chief figurine actually slaps the the butt of the female figurine, Cortana. And, um, you know, it's a gag. And immediately after that, he gets, you know, slapped by Cortana. Well, to me, that's like, okay, yeah, that's why you shouldn't do that. That's why this character is an idiot. He's representing the idiots out there. But I guess Machinima took that so... Uh, worriedly that they actually took the video that existed online and cut out that one part. And without that, you just see him getting uh, hit and thrown into a mirror. And you're wondering, was really him going up and talking to her, like expressing his feelings for her enough for her to warrant hitting him? Maybe the stuff he said was bad. I forgot. Yeah, the stuff he said was pretty bad. But out of context, it doesn't make any sense. So my belief is that they took down the rest of his stuff and they're going to try to edit them down to PC-friendly things and let them go back up. But it's been a nightmare for him because he spent five years of his life working on this stuff. And imagine you've been working on stuff for five years and all of a sudden it's unavailable. And it's not even your fault. It's one thing if you accidentally deleted your stuff. But somebody else is in charge of that and then it's gone. That That's ugh, that's awful. That, that'd, that'd be bad but it's been very entertaining watching him do that he's also doing like video production in machinima courses on his uh live streams which is really awesome um i've been digging that i've been taking notes it's so dumb it's videos you can rewind it and rewatch it again but I, I have to take notes like tactile notes so i can see what i should be doing next like i i, I can follow steps that way easier and it's helped me. It's helped me work on some stuff, and it's helped me make some really big decisions that uh, regarding the future of the Jackass Express that are coming soon. So I know you guys are going to be excited to see that, and I'm excited to share that with you. I know it's going to be awesome. Uh, what else is going on? And the guys are doing well. Brandon's talked about coming back to the States soon, so that's really freaking cool. Julian actually got to visit uh, South Korea for a little while. That was awesome. He didn't get to stay there long, but he took some really amazing pictures. If you go to his Instagram, which, by the way, I have an Instagram. Julian has an Instagram. Who else has an Instagram? I think that's it. Pretty sure it's just me and Julian right now. I think Brandon has one, but he doesn't post there very often. <clears throat> but Julian is an amazing photographer. Amazing photographer. He doesn't even realize it. Like he's got a, He's one of those people that you hate because... They have a talent and they don't and they refuse to admit it. And you're like, um, if I had your ability to take the same com like composition type shots that look beautiful and you understand the the lines and the, the shapes and all that stuff that go into photography, I had no idea. I'm just barely trying to figure this stuff out. He does this stuff like he like it's a part of who he is. Like he and then you say, "Hey, man, you did a really good job. This is awesome." He's like, "Oh no, that's crap. Oh no, that's crap." And I wonder if that's kind of like a a common thing with most content creators. They just immediately decide that all of their stuff is crap. Because I mean, I've had that happen with me before. Where you know we make something and I look back at it and I'm like, "Yeah, I could have done that better," or "Yeah, that's probably not so great." Or recently, the rant that I did about the doctor's office thing. I was rewatching it and thinking, uh, maybe I'm a little bit pretentious and maybe I'm being a little bit too over the top, but you never know, you know, how do you make a trip to the doctor's office exciting? I'm very lucky that the things that happened there get me angry, but it's kind of like listening to one of your uh, friends complain about something after a while. It's like, yeah, okay, shut up. We get it. You were, you didn't like the doctor, but to me, it's like the little tiny instances of things that happen that go wrong. They always amaze me. So I that's that's my stuff. That's what I like to do. But Julian's talent comes from I have to work at my talent. Julian's just raw talent. He knows how to take these shots and they're amazing. And it's actually because of like his work that I've actually started googling like photography tutorials and how to do all that stuff. Not that I'm a photographer, but it's an interesting concept to me because I a lot of my medium has to do with video. So I want the video to look good. I don't want it to just be you know haphazard take a shot of of a plant and try to explain why the plant somehow has meaning or purpose. I want it to look good in addition to have a like a meaning to it when 
I'm turning it into a story. Like if it's a part of a story, why am I showing it? And if I'm going to show it, I want it to look nice so that it not only makes the point, but also is good eye candy. Does that make sense? My cousin recently is ta is in a photography course right now. He actually had a film that was picked for a uh, film festival here in El Paso. And apparently he did really well. He did a documentary on a board game shop. And uh, I watched it and it was good. It was good. And it's, I wonder if it's just a, the new level of nerdiness. You get to a point where you're like, okay, now I want to start filming stuff, taking pictures of stuff. But, oh, man, it was, it was awesome stuff. It's awesome stuff. Well, I'm already on here longer than I thought I would. Um, this podcast probably not going to be as long as the rest of them. I just wanted to touch base with you guys, let you know everything is going good. I'm happy that you guys are still here. I'm happy you guys are still watching Jackass Express. The content production has resumed, officially resumed, which means you'll still not see things from us for at least a month. But, you know, they're in the works. I'm also, uh, we also started a series just to kind of test some stuff out. We're testing a lot of shows out right now. Um, we'd love feedback. We'd love any of your criticisms. We're on youtube.com slash Jackass Express. Please find us, look for us, find our logo. If you see our Facebook page, give that a like, uh, you know, a follow. The biggest thing we're trying to accomplish right now is we're trying to get our subscribers up on YouTube. We have 60 right now. We love them. And honestly, I prefer, I love, let me, let me be honest about this. I'm all for the people who are going around soliciting subscribers. I am. I'm doing that. But a lot of times that leads to this whole you subscribe to me, I subscribe to you thing. And to me that I like that. I get that. I mean, that's the world we live in with YouTube right now, right? But even though, like, because I, I started doing YouTube in the pre-monetization uh, era when you had 10-minute videos and it didn't really matter you're not going to make money off it. So the only reason you make videos is because you like making videos. That was it. So it's not that much different from what I originally went into it with. It's like, that's what it started with. That's what it is. For the longest time, I never monetized anything. And maybe I should have, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because I don't want fans for the sake of fans. I want fans who actually care about what we're talking about. You know, I don't want people pretending they like what I talk about. If, I, if I'm annoying to you or you don't like what I'm saying, don't worry. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Don't, I wouldn't talk to somebody that I don't want, but I feel like I got some interesting stuff to say. I feel like I got, you know, a lot of people that have been through similar situations as me that I'd love to share these topics with so they don't feel like they're alone. But, um, uh, you know, if you feel like you like what's going on here, subscribe. And, uh, you know, apparently there's a bell button that you hit that they get my notifications. You'd be the first ones to know. And I will even give you a shout out for being so kind as to subscribe and being awesome. I really do appreciate you guys. I think this is a great endeavor and I think there's a lot more to come. And our next main goal is as a sneak idea of what we're doing, I'm probably gonna get in trouble saying this, is trying to find a way to include our audience in the conversation. So I'm gonna get in trouble. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.